So I'm just going to cover some of the forgotten issues of superannuation, some of the forgotten opportunities. The first one that I want to uh, raise to your attention is the $500 co-contribution. Most people are well aware of that if they're at the, the lower end of the earning scales. But I want you to just to think about other people for a minute that you might have in your family. And uh, for example, you've got to think first that they're actually working and getting some employer superannuation. But you've got to think children, if you're a benevolent parent, you might want to actually top up your children's super fund a little bit. You want to think low income earners, uh, low income spouse, they're returning back to, the, back to the workforce after having been away for a little while. And then of course there's part-time university students and they're really having a good time down at the hotel and not thinking about their future. But as a benevolent parent, you might want to top that up a little bit. It'll save them waiting for you to die to get their inheritance. And of course, nearing retirement, people that are nearing retirement, this is a great opportunity for them to pick up a little $500. You've got to put $1,000 in of your own money, that's after-tax money, and then you'll pick up the $500. Most people are well aware of that, but what you need to do is just watch the difference there in the top threshold, because if you put $1,000 in and you're on $46,000, you may not get the whole, 46, uh, whole $500 from the government. The other forgotten opportunity is a spouse contribution. So if you put $3,000 in for your spouse, you get a tax rebate of uh, $540. And that is a good way to maybe get some money into your spouse's superannuation fund. Some other contributions uh, are also the uh, concession, non-concessional contributions, so that means after tax. And if you're younger than uh, 65, you can put in $150,000 a year. It's not tax deductible, you just put it in or 450,000 on a bring forward provision, which means you can bring your 150 forward. Or alternatively, if you're 65, but not quite 75, you can put 150 in, but you need to pass the work test. And looking around tonight, I see there's probably a fair few people in small business, and we'll come back to talk about how we help the work test and how that can actually help other people. So an opportunity for someone a little bit older, as we know that, uh, if you're over 65, it's difficult to put money into superannuation and you've got to work 40 hours in 30 days. And so consequently, if you do work 30 hours in 40 days, regardless of, super, regardless of how many hours you've worked, regardless of what your wage was, you can have your employer put $25,000 into superannuation and it's regardless of age or super balance. So if you're sitting out there tonight thinking, well, how do I get some more money into superannuation or how do I get a tax deduction? because I'm in the top marginal tax bracket, and you happen to have your mother or your father that needs to work, get a little bit of a job somewhere, and you've got a, fa and you've got a factory and you want some little bit of extra work done there, you can remunerate your parents, and uh, if it's real, real income, and then you can make the superannuation contribution. Now, of course, I hear people saying, well, if it's only a part-time job, how can they then you know, realistically get $25,000 as a superannuation contribution? Well, the tax man has no problems with that. In fact, he goes on to say that uh, where you work in, in excess of the reasonable value, he is quite happy for you to have a $25,000 superannuation contribution. It doesn't worry him because there was an income tax ruling some years ago where he went on to say that it's quite acceptable and doesn't necessarily need to relate to the hours of work you've done as long as you pass the work test you can have a $25,000 superannuation contribution. However, if you're using your parents, you just might want to need, you just need to watch the asset and income test if they're on the age pension. So just to make sure we don't forget any of the younger people in the audience, if you're a young, struggling family, one of the things you can do is have your tax deductible superannuation coming out and take your life insurance in it, which is a great way to provide some cover for people inside the family or stay-at-home mums or dads who are who also need cover, that would be nice for them to have insurance cover via their superannuation and of course single parents. And of course income protection has become very popular in superannuation and it's now generally two years but a lot of the funds are now offering up to 25 years and that money is coming out of your superannuation fund, not coming out of your pocket. So if you're a young family or a low income earner, use your superannuation to provide you some, some security if you like uh, in terms of uh, yeah, life insurance and income protection. So by using superannuation, you can see that if you're in the top marginal tax bracket of 45%, putting money into superannuation, being taxed at 15%, gives you a saving of somewhere around 30%. So you've just got to watch the $25,000 contribution, because you make more than that as a tax deductible contribution, you'll pay excess tax. But there is an additional saving in terms of the Medicare surcharge and 
the uh, NDS, NDSI, which has come out with the National Disability Scheme. So why are so many people using self-managed superannuation fund? Quite clearly, it's one word, control. And many small business people are using self-managed superannuation funds to actually control the asset themselves, write the checks, they make the decisions to what they're going to invest in. They just have total control, total control rather than to actually outsource that to a financial planning institute, someone like you know, First State or so forth. They want to buy the businesses and own the, they want to buy the property and own it and write the checks themselves. So how can we use a superannuation fund to get into a granny flat? Because I believe George is going to talk on granny flats for us in a minute. So firstly, you select the suitable house uh, which you buy and you can buy that house and then you're going to go and add to it the granny flat. So when you buy the property in the fund, the first thing you're going to use is cash. If you've got enough cash, you can buy the property and go forward or alternatively, you can borrow. And if you're going to borrow, there's a few extra little problems that it does cause um, in terms of using trust deeds and so forth. But either way, you can still buy the house, whether you pay cash or borrow in the self-managed fund. So now you're going to build the granny flat. So how do I pay for the granny flat? That's the next question. If you've borrowed, the problem is you can't use that borrowed monies to actually use and apply to build the granny flat. You've got to use money within the fund. So how do you get money within the fund? Obviously, you make additional contributions. And go back a minute to the contributions I was talking to the contributions I was talking about where you can actually put other money into the superannuation funds by using the 150 uh, contribution or if you've got older parents and you want to remunerate them and they might actually get some money and then pay the tax on it and because you've been a wonderful child they might actually give you back the money when they retire from your from your employment and that would go then you could then make a contribution back into your self-managed super fund to um, pay for the pay for the granny flat and there's the income tax ruling that says a granny flat in a house is uh, more than acceptable asset for a self-managed super fund Anyone in the building industry here? A few. We all know about the uh, changes to um, subcontractor reporting. What it means basically is the ATO wants every person paying a subcontractor to provide the uh, amount of money they've paid in the GST amount and that's going to be a, a definite audit issue for next year. And just to look at the industries it's covered, it's basically covering every industry in the building industry. So. Um, if, if you've got anything to do with building, be aware of that. Uh, so Jason asked me to finish off with something a little bit interesting. So what I've got is, in your folders, you've all got one of these little, little things. And if you just play along with me, we'll just see how we go. So if you pull it out, you've been generously supplied a, a pen by St George Bank, I believe. So I look at this as the uh, wheel of life or the circle of life, and you can See from here we've got some little issues, some little things on our spokes, on our wheels. And the whole idea of this is if this is a wheel rolling down the road, the smoother it is the better. So I asked my team at work to uh, pop some spots in for me. So they looked at my family life and said, well, okay, given that zero is, in the, is the unhappy area at the middle and 100% out the outside is everything's wonderful, they put in uh, somewhere around about the 60%. They said family life 60%. So that means life's okay, it's not perfect, but it's okay. Not enough money, that's obvious, no one's ever got enough money. Health and fitness, as you can see, I spend too much time at the gym. So they put it right out there, I'm wasting far too much time at the gym. Professional development, uh, too much time at the gym, not enough time studying, working. Uh, personal time, well-being, religious, no, no, you don't go to church very much, we'll cross that off. And because I'm an accountant, I quite clearly have no friends. So if you join those dots together, have you all done your little circle there, put your little marks on there? If you join the dots together, you can see that quite clearly my wheel is a bit bumpy in a few spots. It's going to be a bit jerky going down the road. So this is where you can put together a little strategy for yourself, work out what you're going to do, and then you're going to go and say, well, okay, I'm going to do these certain things. And then you'll look at where you're going to be in three months' time. So, Redo it in three months' time, and let's say I've put some strategies in place and I've gone three months down the track. I've now got a second job, so I've got more money. I'm now not quite as familiar at home with, with my kids because, you know, you're working now more, Dad, you know, why aren't you home? 
Um, I'm obviously not with the second job. I've got more professional development to do. Uh, I've had to back away from the gym a fair bit. And uh, obviously now my personal time has got a little bit better. And uh, I've now got money, so I've obviously got friends. I've got Facebook friends and I've got Twitter friends and all that sort of thing. So if I join those together, you can see that now my wheel is a lot more round and I'm able to roll down the road a lot better than that particular wheel there. So that's just something for you to take away tonight. If you're in business, you can apply that to your customers. You can apply that to anything you like in your business. Just come up and uh, work out some new uh, things on your spokes and go with that. Thank you very much, Jason.